Closet, also known as the Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers World Headquarters Studio. This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. Please subscribe, rate, and comment via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast. This is episode 26 of the JMVO Weekly Primer. And this is about making your life better through marinating your mind in good stuff. My name is Jim McCarthy, owner, operator, and chief bottle washer at JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. I believe that as business owners, entrepreneurs, and overall salespeople, we are bombarded by negativity every day, and it's the last thing we need. If you want to see your life and business change for the better, consume nurturing good stuff. Now, I said, you know, we're bombarded by negativity every day. It's odd no, not odd, but it's it, this is a big reason for my guest today, and I've seen his posts all around Facebook and Instagram. He's an entrepreneur in the truest sense of the word, um, and, and it's funny because in the beginning stages, whenever you start doing something that's needed, or but it upsets the apple cart for other people in the industry, they will come out with their claws out and their teeth bared and... You know, first they'll they'll laugh at you, then they'll hate you, then they'll mock you, and then all of a sudden they accept you, and then you win. I believe that's how the actual saying goes. But please welcome to this episode, episode 26, Mr. Earl Hall, Air Force veteran, voiceover, leading edge expert to the program. Welcome, sir. Thanks, Jim, for that amazing intro. I definitely appreciate that. Um, and thanks everyone, you know, for watching and it's my honor to be on the show. I know that probably like my phone just locked up, so I'm going to log out and log right back in immediately again, because this is going on with B-Live. Hopefully you can hear me now, right? Oh, he's going to log out and log back in. So I'll continue with this <laughs> until we get it all set back up. Yeah, we got it. I'm you back. got it. Cool. All right. <laughs> So let's start from the beginning. You, you came out of the, I'm, I'm going to, you know, obviously your formative years and everything. You went into the Air Force, I would believe, 18, 19 years old? I was 17 when I went into the United States Air Force. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Appreciate How did that. that bring you into voiceover? What's what's your story? What's your backstory? Well, I've always been interested in tech. Um, you took a lot of programming classes in high school. And... You know, subsequently through being in the Air Force and being, I was a survival instructor is mm -hmm. what I did in the Air Force. I was a part of the Air Crew Life Support Team, which took care of all the life support gear and also trained the air crew on how to survive and, you know, for chemical defense, land and water survival, escape and evasion, things of, the, things of that nature. And after that, I really got interested in internet radio. And this is going back to about... 99 2000 and um, i got out of the air force in 92 is uh, when my service ended went in in 1987 and got out in 92 and doing that and also subsequently being on radio um here in the city of milwaukee and doing certain types of broadcast it just kind of came as a natural flow mm -hmm. for voiceover and I always knew I had some sort of purpose. I just never really knew what it was. And then getting into voiceover has helped reveal that for me. Um, I love doing voiceover because it gives all of us, obviously, a chance to kind of act out in a way that maybe we normally wouldn't be able to through doing characters or educational type things. One of my, the biggest forte that I have is e-learning and doing that. And subsequently from doing that, I got into the coaching space. Very cool. So you essentially got into it around the millennium that that time. Yeah. Okay. So your and my story are somewhat similar. Both started out in radio. I mm -hmm. cut my teeth in radio in the production studios and, and things of that nature. Worked in three separate markets, which like wow. on I was on your sh show earlier this week and I said, you know, yeah. to the general voiceover community of the, the elitists and the legacy people that are out there, I have that stench on me in terms of being on radio and he's actually going to be coming on. He's... Uh, He's trying to come back on here. I have that stench on me, and there's an actual thing about radio people who become voiceover people. Okay, yeah, yeah. and a yeah. lot of people, a lot of traditionalists and legacy people hold it against us because we learned in radio. Um, yeah, but what they don't know is I had a program director at one point who said, "Look, man, don't be a radio guy trying to do voiceover." sound like a voiceover person doing voiceover you got to you got to bring the copy to life and you got to you you can everything's yeah. not a 
puke spot. Okay, so <laughs> that happened early on in my career in voiceover. I would imagine similar to yours. I, bringing it forward into the coaching space, you have the equity to coach people, and that's seemingly on the threads that I read. A lot of people take that into account and they wonder about that equity of like, you know, okay, what gives you the right to, to do the voiceover thing and the voiceover coaching? And some of them even call it predatory and all this other stuff. I look yeah. at it as, and you and I just dis- discussed this with your your um, kind of like getting in the weeds, deep dive, uh, power yeah. team, is it uh, or what's it called you, we were talking about before? It, well, what I have is a mastermind. mastermind. It's called Next Level Voiceover Domination. So that is where you're being ultra selective with people Mm -hmm. who have done voiceover and you want to make sure that they're going to get the most out of it. Guys, when it comes to business, getting a coach and a mentor is important, no matter what business you're in. Now, most of us, I've taken free phone calls. I've given free advice. I don't mind doing it. But some of us, if you're starting to gravitate and people see what you're saying, Mm -hmm. it's important you got to get paid for your time, <laughs> okay, yeah. at some point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a demand for it, all right? Yeah. And if it's good stuff yeah. and people see the value in it and they're okay paying it, what are the other people bitching about, man? What's, what's it all about to you? When did, when did it really start becoming apparent to you that you were like, holy crap, man? It became uh, painfully apparent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> once my, I mean, my YouTube channel at this point has over 4,000 subscribers to the YouTube channel. Looks like- Good for you. Oh, we lost them again. This Be Live up in Milwaukee is having a little bit of issues for some reason. It, it, it became, can you see me now? I can see you now. There you go. You hear me? Okay. So it became painfully apparent to me um, after my, my YouTube channel now has about 4,000 subscribers. It became apparent when it hit about 1,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of a sudden there were being posts all over the net. What do you guys think about this new guy on the block? You know, like I just got here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I just got here and I went through six months to a year of basically developing that YouTube channel and which at this point has close to 400 videos on it. Um, giving away my best information, everything that I knew, everything that I understood up to the point where I was, I just gave it away. I just Mm -hmm. let it all go. And it's still there to be consumed um, on my YouTube channel. I subsequently formed a Facebook group um, that's called Steps to Voice Over Success. Mm -hmm. And that has grown within one year to over a thousand members on that community which is larger than most voiceover groups that are out there in the coaching space Mm -hmm. not in the general voiceover world but in the coaching space it is literally one of the largest oh you mean the the voiceover bitch pages right where people just bitch about stuff yeah and it's it one of the things that warms my heart is that the people that are in my group and they'll say this and they've said it over and over there is no negativity in this group there is no coming down on anything or anyone or any opinion or whatever because it's a free it's it's a free place to come to get information not only get information but give it mm-hmm and that's the thing that has really separated this group from any other group that's out there. And the only reason I can say this is not because it's what I know, it's because what other people say. Yeah. You know, which at really at times it has brought me to tears looking at some of the things that people say about the group, about me, about others in the group, because it's so giving, which is what the voiceover community says it is. You know, we're loving, we're giving, we want to help. But if you don't do it, the way that they say do it, you will be ostracized. Ostracized. We're gonna wait till he comes back on here. Here we go. Okay. I was saying go. if you don't <laughs> if you don't do it the way that the group says you're supposed to do it, if you don't follow this way of building your voiceover business, you're wrong. If you are on Fiverr, you're not really a voiceover artist, you know, you're a bottom feeder. Um a lot of that negativity is out there and it comes through and it's just not something I'm interested in, in being a part of at all. Right. So you, know, you just, you were, you marinate everybody's mind and good stuff. I mean, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Thinking positive. 
I don't exactly. know if I'm thinking negative by bringing it up, but I'm I'm just kind of I look at it from afar, and it's not like uh-huh. I'm you know Switzerland and being neutral on it. I engage in I engaged in one conversation where this poor woman she's she's from Nashville. She had a mm-hmm. an aggregator site idea similar to Badalgo and all the different you know Voices dot com uh-huh. and. And she went on the voiceover site saying, hey, I'm looking for talent to join up here. It's kind of like, you know, Fiverr, but you name your own price. And, I mean, it was just game on people attacking and tearing her down. One person even said, well, we're pissed off because you didn't check with us first to see if it was like, you know, like almost like you didn't get our permission. And I looked at that comment. I said, what? Yeah. I didn't get your but what I I didn't know I had to get your permission really so let me get this straight if I miss my mortgage payment are you going to be there to bail me out? It's a reason I use one of the taglines that I use. Don't wait for permission for anyone to be great. <laughs> that's great. That's it's awesome. It's the reason. It's the reason why that tagline is on so many things that I put out there. Stop waiting on permission from anyone. Well, let me ask Don't. you this: some, for mm-hmm. some of the doubters out there, and that that, that are mm-hmm. you know going on and calling it predatory coaching and everything, mm-hmm. would you dare them to be a part of it and be like, "Look, if you think it's predatory coaching, why don't you join up and find out what it truly is all about?" Put it Here's to the, the test. Thing. Here's the thing, and I'm going to go back a little bit here. When I started my YouTube channel, I did mostly lives, and I still do live streams, mm-hmm. and so I'm out in the public openly. There is not many you're one of the few Mm -hmm. that will go on live and we're waiting we're gonna get him back on here soon okay there we go there (laughs) i've got them down to a science you know what it's Uh, it's it's like keeping us on our toes man it's cool it's i do things and have done things and this wasn't a thought in my mind when i did it but i understand the reason why i did it now is because i did live because i wasn't afraid and i didn't want to hide I wanted to be out in the open and I wanted the comments and the people to say whatever it is they wanted to say about what it is that I was doing. And I still do that. And you'll notice most of the big name coaches don't do that. They don't put themselves out there in a live open format in order for in order to engage with people. And so I did that on now I understand why I did that. So now I say I do it on purpose because no one, not one person that I have worked with or coached has ever said anything bad about me at all. It's not there. They Mm -hmm. don't say it. The ones that say something negative are people I've never talked to. I don't know. I have no clue who they are. And it got down to a point where the people in what we call, you know, your tribe, um, the people in my tribe started sending me these different messages and things that people were saying about me. And I said, you know what? Stop. Because it doesn't matter, and I don't want that negative stuff in my headspace. Right. I know what I'm doing. Everyone, you know what I'm doing. I'm not hiding. I'm here. So anyone, you can search the net. You can search my group. You can search my YouTube videos. People that have actually worked with me have never one time said anything negative about me because I'm open to the point of fault. Yeah. A lot. It's like I'm extremely transparent and open with what I have the ability to do. And the thing about when you're in a coaching space, so many coaches, I think, fall because they promise something they can't promise. The only thing that I can give to someone is the ability to do what they know how to do and then let them know that your success or failure is completely in your hands. I'll just try and give you the tools to accomplish it. And a lot of that comes from knowing the business side of things, uh, marketing, and like we discussed in your show earlier this week, knowing about selling, and that's that's my big thing, is teaching yes. sales for creatives and a fundamental mm-hmm. sales process that a lot of yes. people lack um, mm-hmm. in terms of just you know moving that ball down the field. I mean, I, I saw in another post the other day, well, what do you do when a client is over 30 days in payment? And a lot of people were going mm-hmm. through, well, remind them of the rules and your terms and blah, blah, blah. And I was the one that pops in and says, look, treat it like a sales call. Okay, call them up. You've certainly got a reason for calling. Get creative right. about another value point you can bring to the table. Say, hey, remember me? I'm doing this thing now you know maybe you brought something new to the table that you can offer them keep it positive keep Mm -hmm. it on the up and up and then all of a sudden and and then bring it in as a by the way hey by the way did you guys get that invoice from the last session 
is there is there a problem mm-hmm. or anything? Do we need to do I need to resubmit? I mean, who do I talk to? We're kind of pushing them on, you know, 35, 40 days. No biggie, just want to make sure that everything's copacetic. Yeah. That's a way to kind of keep you in good graces with the people that you're working with, which is what we discussed. Um Definitely. You know, it's it's along the same lines as, as what I tell people. In in the marketing space, we have a tendency to try and be more creative than is ever needed. One of the things about marketing that I've learned mm-hmm. is that if you look at your own actions on things and how you react to marketing, it'll kind of give you a clue as to what to do. Like when you know people want to say, well, I want to do a, a radio ad or I, you know, for my voiceover work, or I want to do a television ad or something along those natures. And my first response is, hmm, what do you do when a TV commercial comes on? What do you do when a radio ad comes on the on the uh, radio? What are your responses to marketing, mm-hmm. and what marketing do you actually pay attention to? Let's look at that, and let's not try and reinvent the apple cart, but let's just look at natural human nature. It's not hard no. to do, you know. I mean, even to the point of I'm going to ref- he's going to refresh again. He's coming on back. Problems yeah, of the that, yeah. Even to that, even to the point of what you were talking about earlier, if someone's thirty days past due, well, if you were supposed to meet a friend and they didn't show up, hey buddy, what what happened? Yeah, did I did, did I did I miss it? Did mm-hmm. we not? Were we not supposed to meet here? Did Was I? Was it me? I mean, how do you <laughs> act in nature? How do you just normally act? You yeah. know. Even in our, our emails that we send and things, you know, people always want a template. I don't give templates. Mm-hmm. I'm like, look, how would you naturally say this to your mom? <laughs> Let it be you. You know, why does this have to be some sort of hocus pocus trick to get someone to do something? It's like if you're just authentically who you are, that's your value proposition and differentiator from everyone else is you. But understanding so trying to, yeah, that you got to be them centric. Like someone else. Yeah. Right. Trying to be like someone else is your death. No. It is your death because it does not come from an authentic place of who you are. Just be you. <laughs> yeah. And, and sometimes with a lot of people trying to go about it with the because there's a notion, as you're well aware, that if you do this for a living, that you have an elevated status. And because you do voiceover, there's this mo- notion of, well, <laughs> that it, it makes you uh, not better than other people, but they have that kind of aura that, you know, do you yeah. know how long, how many people would love to do what I do? Right. And, you know, that, that, right, you know, the elitists and stuff like that have that, you know, but the newbies that are coming on, they're just happy to make, you know, 50 bucks for a read and work for, you know, however long it takes them. Um, my point is, I get what you're saying, and on the the show we did earlier, one of the, I listened back to it, and I, I I'm like, man, I wish I made this point because I talk about, you know, I understand where they're coming from that they get upset yeah. because people are, you know, they're not charging enough, but there's so many people onboarding into the industry on a daily, you know, weekly, monthly basis. I think oh. it was like, like yeah, mil- There's like I said, voiceover talent. I believe has 10 million. Uh, people that identify themselves as a voiceover talent. So you have that to contend with. That's the reality. That's the market. To go yeah. at it, I think the point I wanted to make earlier in the week was to go at it with a justification of to use you in that value proposition with the reasoning of, well, that's what the rates are. Uh, wow. Just be, I don't crack my mic for less than $350. You know, yeah. this is what the yeah. industry standard rate card is. Those aren't reasons for people to buy from you, you know? Yeah. This is what I charge. That's it. End of story. Go screw if you don't mm-hmm. want, you know. And if you lowball me and I'm going to take your email and flame you on a Facebook page, blows my mind. It blows my I mean, yeah. it really shouldn't surprise me at this point anymore. Um, but you're right. Um, you know, and a lot of the things that we talk about, too, you're a big follower of Grant Cardone. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. There's an element of... You're probably doing something right. Because I put out a video that said, creatives, get over yourselves. I thought I would be lambasted. I wasn't. There were a lot of people that actually... One guy actually came out and said, dude, I get what you're saying. I agree. But shut up, man. Let them keep on doing what they're doing. We can keep on doing what we're doing. Capiche? And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. You know, 
but I'm going to be the to see you, right. <laughs> you know, but if you know, I if I can share with people how to do basic sales fundamental things, it's one thing to be authentic yeah. and be yourself, but you got to have a plan, a strategic plan, yeah. and that's where a sales a, that apply. right fa- fundamental sales process. Um, yeah. So Grant Cardone, he's got a meme that says. Haters, bring them on, Donkey Kong or Ding Dong. I think it's what it's. Uh, what do you think of that? Is is that something that at least makes you go, well, at least I got that going for me? There's a there's an interesting um, quote that I came across, and it might be a little deep, but I'll explain it. And it comes from Neil Donald Walsh. He was the writer of Conversations with God, and he said that. In the absence of what you are not, what you are is not. And basically, I'm going to refresh my screen here because you froze. <laughs> this is be live, be live. We got to let you guys know that okay. Uh, okay. your platform so, is kind of squirrely. The last, did you hear me say about Neil Walsh? Yep. yep. Okay. So, in the absence of what you are not, what you are is not. Meaning that there can't be the ultimate you, who you are in the good space without that negativity there. Because without the negativity there, you don't even realize you're good. You don't even realize your ultimate purpose and what it is. Because if there was only light, which most of us would want, we wouldn't know that it was light in the absence of darkness. And so when you talk about the haters that are out there, I look at it, I need that. It's uh, oppos- it's an opposition to who I really am, but the only way I know who I really am is because what I'm not, as far as what they're saying, is there. Mm-hmm. So now I understand the level that I'm on. So I don't, you know, begrudge my haters, which I'm sure I have plenty of them, <laughs> but it allows me to continue to operate at the level that I'm operating because, you know what, if that pissed you off, oh, keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> man i call it the howard stern effect okay you know <laughs> there's uh who was i talking to about that it might have been uh i think it was phil valentine in episode 24 26 or 27 but he yeah. uh i said you know when howard started getting big there are a lot of people that really didn't like him and of course there are a lot of people who did um they started losing advertisers but they started gaining advertisers that they were chasing after for years that just didn't have any interest in advertising so there was a switch off of audience and when they actually came in with the ratings from arbitron at the time of course they did studies as to why people listened how long and you know as to why they listened um they said well People who like Stern listen for an average of two hours. Reason most commonly given, I want to hear what he'll say next. Well, what about the people who don't listen to or don't like him? Well, that's interesting. They listen for three hours. Reason most commonly (laughs) given, I want to hear what he'll say next. next. (laughs) So it seemed to work out for him, Earl. Uh, Uh, (laughs) And I think that eventually it's probably going to work out for you. Um, So that, that in mind, if you don't plant a stake into what you believe you know and what is it about what you do what is it that you do believe what is your why the why that i have is in what i understand is my ultimate purpose in particular in the voiceover arena Mm -hmm. is to let people know that they have the innate ability to accomplish whatever it is that they want to accomplish I approach coaching from a perspective that I've come to understand is very different from most others, not because I've been coached by others in voiceover, because I haven't. I've been coached by marketing experts is how I've learned what I've learned because the voiceover industry doesn't have a clue. But I've learned that the difference between success and failure is what the person thinks about themselves. In the part that I do with coaching that is predominant, it literally has nothing to do with voiceover. It has to do with their mindset about themselves. I don't tell people, look, every last one of us have has access to every last freaking video, every last freaking book, every last freaking webinar, live stream that we do, the people saying this is how you do it. And if that's the case, why isn't everybody successful? Mm-hmm. There's a defining factor. 
that's the person that's the individual and that's what i focus on so people will ask well what's your guarantee i have none because i don't know who you are and i don't know what you're willing to do or if you're willing to go above and beyond what everyone else is willing to do and if you're willing and have an understanding that your success or failure either one is your decision it's up to you because i'm not doing the work for you i'm going to show you the stuff but i don't give people this is one of the big things i do not have a cookie cutter approach for anything because every last person that i coach is different there i don't have a syllabus i don't have it's not cookie cutter and i don't tell people what they ought to do when you go and see a voiceover coach i'm going to swing back in sure yeah, voiceover coaches either okay yeah. so normally normally when you go and see a voiceover coach or you want to get coaching in the art they'll listen to your voice and they'll say this is where i think your voice fits i don't do that at all because if someone is going to tell me where my voice fits then i'm going to lock in on that and i'm going to do that and i may never have an interest in that i may want to do character and they're telling me to do audiobooks mm -hmm. my only concern is what do you want to have happen that's what we're going to work on because that's what you want in your heart of hearts. And that's why the people that work with me achieve the level of success that they do is because I focus on them as a person. So not you're, as a, you're focusing on the technique of their ability as well. Yes. Okay. But you're also bringing yeah. business. I mean, if you talk like this, you're not going to do movie trips. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, but. <laughs> well, the funny thing about the movie trailer, when was the last time you saw a flipping movie trailer with a movie trailer voice? Well, yeah. There you right? Go. <laughs> that's not really popular right now. I mean, promo voicing, that's one thing. And that's, that's something that's that I'm big on. Um, I guess I have the opportunity. I have the benefit of the past 20 years of not really being a part of the traditional voiceover community. Mm -hmm. And I guess I attribute my success to that because it's like going to public school. They're only going to fill your head with what is inside the box, you know, and what they know and agents right. and how to do this. And yeah, there's a definite benefit to getting an agent. And if you're not able to sell yourself or prospect or anything, it doesn't give them, you know, it's not that they're going to go out and market you for you. They're there to negotiate and sell your voice and things of that nature. Yeah. But, in this industry, most times if you're waiting for an agent, mm -hmm. you're going to starve. Have you had, or, waiting, have you had an agent before or do you have I one? I have two. Do you? I have two agents. They don't feed me. No. <laughs> if they bring something to the table, you're like, great. Exactly. Yeah. It's just another stream of revenue right. that's out there. <clears throat> well, that's tell me about what you do in terms of your business side of things. You get, you know, I've, I've explained my lowball client approach. You know, everybody gets them. Some people get angry when it happens. Some people don't. Okay. Other people, you know, see the opportunity for what it is, as I do, and I teach that. You get a lowball client. What's your process? How do you immediately go after them? How, you mean how do I respond to yeah. a ball offer? Yeah. Oh, the way that I would do with anything else. It's like, oh, well, this is normally what I would charge for that. Do you want me to explain why? Mm -hmm. And, you know, or if this is outside of your budget, you know, it's okay. It's cool. But if something comes up in the future that you feel I'm a fit for, that is more in line with what I would normally charge then maybe we can have a conversation. And that only happens, I'm not talking about if I'm charging 300 and they're offering 250. Yeah, That's not the conversation. I'm talking about if I know I have always gotten 300 and they're offering 50. Right. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, because I've got more clients coming in the pipeline, so it's, I don't, but if you're on day 10 of being a voice actor, do you really wanna not take the 50? in order to build up the client base. And these are things that comes down to your own self-awareness and what it is that you've decided you will or won't accept. And most of the time in the early days of voiceover, you really don't know what you have to a choice. accept. Yeah. Right. And it's like, I have no client base. So how do I get that? And how do I work through and get to a certain level where I can charge the 300 or $1,000 and that's what I'll get every time, not because I ask for it, but because that's what the client base that I have knows that that's what needs to occur. 
one of the biggest jobs that I've had yeah, this year was from HP. It was $6,300. And it was for an e-learning project. And it took, it was, it was about 20 hours. And the thing was, guess where I got that order? Referral. Fiverr. Yeah. It came off of Fiverr. Mm-hmm. $6,300. <laughs> and here's the thing about it. Uh, let me refresh again. Go right ahead. Yeah, a lot of people discount Fiverr uh, because of the nature. Here's the, here's, here's the thing about that order. The way that it came into me on Fiverr was like this. They approached me and had paragraph after paragraph of what they wanted. It was a detailed explanation of what they needed from me. Not only was it a detailed explanation, but also within that, hey, how much do you charge to do a sample? Yeah. As opposed to a lot of the lowball offers, hey, can you read this for me? Well, what is it? You know, we need somebody to do a voice. Well, what do you need? And so it's like, you know the difference in the level of the client a lot of times based on the level of information they're giving you on the outset. Corey Disson was part of was was on my guest earlier this week, and I think you might be setting mm-hmm. up to have him as a guest as well. And he's a yeah, great he's guest. coming on next week on my show. Propulsion yeah. Media Labs up in PA. He he represented uh, re- worked for Paul Turner, and Paul Turner was the voice of the Howard Stern Show for years. He was like wow. you know the Howard Stern Show. That guy, great great voice. <laughs> but he um, <laughs> he 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 put it in the real great perspective. He said, "Look, at the end of the day, there's always going to be." Lamborghini, Ferrari, Alfa Romeo, Mercedes, and there's always going to be Kia, Chevy, Hyundai. You know, yeah. you're, you, that's what the industry is starting to become. It's be, it's becoming very diverse. You're going to have those yes. two dichotomies. You're going to have the middle ground of things. You're going to have the people who make a crap ton of money really doing it because of their relationships. Yeah. Not, I mean, yeah, and their talent, but mainly relationships and, and being in the right place like L.A., New York, and Chicago and Miami. Sure. Yeah. Um, but he said a lot of the people, a lot of the same people who will complain about lowball offers and $50 offers and $25 reads and $75 reads will be the same ones that audition ad nauseum for free. And he's like, consider it a paid audition, man. You know? You know, I never thought about that, but that's Isn't a, that a great point. That will help. Yeah. Yeah. He, he brought that up, and I'm like, that's a terrific point, man. Talk about dropping a mm-hmm. bomb. So do you have online courses that you um, actually put out there and, you know, allow people to download and stuff? Mm Mm-hmm. Online courses? Yeah. I got to hook you up with Brad Lee. You know who Brad Lee is? No. Actually, let me refresh this again. Go ahead. Brad Lee owns a uh, company called Lightspeed VT, and it's a virtual training company, and he basically will take what you do and... Just make it huge. And I think that might be a good step for you uh, next. And I, I could make that connection if you want to talk to him or one of his guys. Absolutely. Opportunities are never things I turn away. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether they work out or not, it's like you never know the next thing that's going to take you to that next level unless you have no fear of going forward. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of people, um, you know, the, the, the non-traditional ways of marketing yourself are mm-hmm. just infinite. And uh, with his, the way he does it, he's got a podcast. He's on, it's called Dropping Bombs. You might hear somebody familiar okay. on the front end of it. Me. Okay. Just, I'll, I'll fill in that blank. And that was because I pursued him. You know, I blew him up on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and, uh, you know, tr- a non traditional marketing approach of doing a spec spot. Uh-huh. I did a spec spot yesterday for a book that's coming up. Another coach friend of mine, he came out and said, look, man, you got to do a voiceover for this guy. He would love it. You know, just put something together. I know you just took 15 minutes, slapped something together, sounded great, sent it off to him, said, if he likes it, awesome. That's the way we got to approach it these days, you know? Absolutely. One by one. Um, But I'll connect you with Brad Lee. That's a great podcast to listen to, by the way. He's very... uh, Authentic. Yeah, shoot me the link on his podcast. I'd yeah. love to take a listen to that. Dropping bombs. And he calls his, his audience the bomb squad. Ah, I love it. I got I got on his radar same way I got on Cardone's radar. I did him a spec okay. and put a video together and put it out there. And all of a sudden, I think my wife uh, texted me. She says, hey, Brad Lee said that you're hired. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> 
and it started a relationship, you know. Awesome. So. <clears throat> but uh, you know, I, I want to make sure I help him. He's certainly helped me as uh, feeding me other podcast clients and things of that nature. But um, as far as an online course, what you currently have, talk a little bit about that. There's a there's a bunch of them um, that I have at steps to voiceoversuccess dot com is the website steps to voiceoversuccess dot com. You know, from I have a free course there for folks that want to know and understand what it takes to get into voiceover. That's an absolutely free course. I've got courses on obviously everything to do with marketing from Fiverr to um, LinkedIn to Facebook ads. Um, I, I can't name them all. There's more than a few that are on there um, and they're always selling. You know, and people are always commenting, you know, on them. I don't, what's funny is I don't do a lot of marketing of it. Right. Um, it just kind of handles itself. I think when people hear me and they discover who I am, whether it's through YouTube or joining the Facebook group or something <laughs> like that, they just kind of, I think instinctively, we just want to know more. If you're interested in what the person is saying, you're going to do research and go and try and find out more and more and more right. um, information about them. So, but and that website's been around just over a year and a half now. And how's it and doing? You getting people signing on and everything? Absolutely. When you go to the website, especially if you're on your actually if you're on your computer, laptop, or even your um, phone, it'll even tell you how many people are like have just looked or whatever. Because uh, I have it, I had it set up that way to be able to do that. And I'm always shocked at how many people are on my site. I get over ten thousand hits to my site a month. Wow. So are you, uh, is it kind of a subscription base or is it one off, one and done? Download the courses. One, it, you can join the site uh, for free uh, right. by getting the free course. That's how you join the site for free. And I don't send out emails uh, actually to my tribe. Um, there's close to 2,500 people that are members of that site alone just of steps to voice over success the website and i never inundate them unless i feel like i have something to say is when i'll send an email right so when you join you'll have um i think about 10 emails that go out automatically but after that there's nothing i'm going to ask you one thing um and that is what is the best thing one of your clients has said to you that sticks out in your mind you changed my life really you changed my life what that was that probably what was that the most from amazing her? it came from in the mastermind next level voiceover domination and that is the most humbling thing that anyone can say to me at least is that because i don't ever think that I know more than anyone else knows because we all we all as I was saying before kind of facetiously have access to the same information that's out there I don't have any more access to anything else than anyone else does and for someone and when you can see it because all the coaching that I do is face to face either in my office or on Skype or through Zoom and I'm always on camera and the reason I do coaching on camera is because Everyone has a BS detector, everyone. And I need you to see me because if your inner thing goes off, you need to hear, you need to hear that and yeah. you will know it instinctively. And so that's why I do face-to-face -face coaching also, not only so they can see me, but I can see them and I can say, no, you're BSing me right now. And I'll call you out on it. No, you, you're not really doing this. You know, and it's for that reason. And when I do, whether it's group coaching or one on one coaching, but in particular, well, it doesn't matter which. But when you see that light bulb go off in someone and you see it, it's an awesome and amazing feeling. And they can see the whole picture from beginning to end off of a few sentences or paragraphs that, that I've said. And it just opens up an entire world to them. And that is the most awesome and amazing feeling that I have through coaching. Now, you mentioned Fiverr before. Um, talk a little bit about Fiverr and its benefits in terms of what people should expect out of it. Now, on the surface, it seems like it's a, you know, $5 a, a hauler kind of thing. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you booked a $6,000 job off of it. Why did that happen off of a site like that? What is the misunderstanding, the misconception of Fiverr? 
The misconception of Fiverr is this. When most people approach Fiverr from a freelance standpoint, because of the name, automatically they look at it as a discount service platform. I look at it as a place to conduct business. That's it. It's a platform for me to conduct business. And if you look at it from that standpoint, and you may not be able to look at it right away that way because of where you are, you might be freshly new or whatever. And what I was coaching someone the other day, and I think I even said this on my show, when it comes to pricing things, many people have a tendency to price things based on what they think they can afford, mm. not what the market can afford. Interesting. And it's, that's a self-limiting type of belief. And we approach our pricing, many, many of us do, based on what we feel we can pay. Not even what it's worth, but what we can pay. And so instead of looking at Fiverr, and it doesn't even matter the platform, instead of looking at it as a, dis, a place to discount your services, look at it as a place to do business. One of the guys that's in my group, you know, gave his testimony the other day. He got himself in trouble. Because one thing people don't understand is that just because someone finds you on Fiverr doesn't mean that they haven't seen you somewhere else or gone to your website. They went and looked at his pricing on Fiverr and then came to him and asked him how much he charged. And he gave him a much larger price than it was on Fiverr. And so I've told people and coach people, what you charge offline is what you charge online. That's the thing. Because anyone, well, not anyone, but many people that have a, you know some business acumen, they're going to research some stuff and look at some stuff. And if you're not congruent across the board, they're going to go with the most cheapest way they can get you. Yeah, and they're going to use so it against you. That. They're going to use it against you. Um, with Fiverr, though, I my take on Fiverr is this. They essentially, it's a tip of the spear way to introduce your services. And on that, I would believe you have to set your expectations pretty clearly on mm -hmm. that website. So, um, to me, that's how it comes off. I'm not, I don't think I'm, I even have an account on there. I probably should, you know, and I'll probably get lambasted and flamed because of it, but who freaking, well, let me there. tell you this. One of the guys that I interviewed on my show <clears throat> told me this, uh, he owns a studio out in LA, uh, voiceover coaching studio. And he said, Earl, I'm going to tell you something. These guys and gals out here in LA that are talking about Fiverr, a lot of them are there undercover. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it at all. But like I said on your show, the biggest, the loudest guys or gals that yeah. sit there and shout from the mountaintops about rate integrity and know yeah. your worth and all this, all this freaking trite BS is they're they're the first people that if you say, well, if you apply a basic sales fundamental process because it's needed in this day and age, well, let me stop you right there. No, you don't get to tell me what to charge okay or what to do because yeah. i'm doing just fine i'm good I'm, do I'm good i'm good i'm doing great it's all the rest of you that are gonna ruin it for me but i'm doing great i need here's that for my thing. pride yeah right and here's the thing that Get i over yourself whether you're starting in the voiceover industry today or whether you've been in for years one of my coaches some people may be familiar with her um that i've had her name is lindsey wilson amazing individual and when she was dealing with me on my pricing and what I do, um, and she deals with what we would consider to be elite folks in the business world. We're not talking voiceover. Yeah. And she was saying, Earl, you need to craft a $25,000 offer. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And she switched that up, and it's I, I understood why, and it's what I employ now with the people that I coach, whether it's you start today or you've been in for 25 years. What she said to me is, okay, what are you comfortable receiving? Yeah, you had mentioned that. That was a very way, interesting Not way of putting it. what are you comfortable it. charging? Yeah. But what are you comfortable receiving? <clears throat> that was a very interesting way to put it. And a lot of people don't 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 think about it that way. There are people that'll that'll flame you for asking what your budget is, and that's that for me. That was always just a great starting point. You know, mm -hmm. well, you should put your rates out there, and that should be good enough. And that's that's the argument I have all the time. It's not good enough, guys, because yeah. they're going to shop you. You've got competition. Yeah. There are people that are going to look around and find that there are thousands yeah. of people who sound just like you. Just like. 
you got to hold on to these people when they fall in your lap and figure out how to convert them and make a relationship. Like, that's a great way to put it. What are you comfortable receiving? Meaning, what is the client comfortable receiving or you as the... No, okay. because if you're not, what are you comfortable as the voice actor? What are you comfortable receiving? And what that ultimately breaks down into is if the industry standard is 300, but when you say the words 300, you're sweating, you're da 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 No, what are you comfortable receiving? What are you comfortable saying? This is what I'm worth. Yeah. What is your comfort? Because I can tell you to charge 300, but if I'm making you do that, there is no comfort. And on some way, shape, or form, the other person on the other end is going to feel and sense that. I think in any creative process, no matter what you're doing, photography, graphic design, voiceover, the whole know your worth movement is, I understand that. You got to know your worth, but it doesn't mean crap. If you don't know how to sell it, if you don't know how to get yeah. into that value proposition and what I call put on, put the blinders on to make mm-hmm. you the only option that when you're done with that phone call, <clears throat> you've done such a good job to make them fall in love with you that mm-hmm. they, you know, the next step, which, you know, in every value proposition should lead, the, lead to that conversation. The next mm-hmm. step in the process, what are we doing? What's the mini commitment? Am I, am I good? Should we set up a time to record this? Or what's right. the next step? Are we getting together again? Is there another decision maker? Mm-hmm. Well, you got to talk to somebody else. Great. Do you want me in on the conversation? I'm more than happy to be a part of it. Um, can we go ahead and move forward with that? Um, mm-hmm. You know, if somebody has got a decision maker they got to bring you to, you want to make sure that they say, man, I interviewed probably five or six guys and gals, and, but yeah. there was this one person. Man, they were so cool, so understanding. They really want to work with us. Yeah. You know, I think we should give this guy a shot. Turning him into a flaming advocate. You're not going to do yeah. that when you come out of the box and say, well... This is what the GVAA rate guide is, and this is how much I'm worth, and this is what I've been paid in the past. I don't really give a crap. This is how much I paid for training. This is how much the microphone cost, so I need to make my money back. That ain't a reason, guys. Not a reason. That is not a reason. I mean, whenever somebody says, well, you know, well, what are are your rates? I always turn around and say, well, listen, let's talk about your project a little bit. Get them talking about the project. Then you bring it back. Well, let me ask you something real quick. What was something, what was the budget that you're putting forward for something like this for, to bring the voiceover person on? Then hopefully you brought them down. They got their guard down and then they come back and tell you, well, we, we got $250 for it. Okay. Um, typically for something like this, I would, I would pivot into a, uh, uh, bracketing, position at that point and i would say you know for something like this i would do probably somewhere between 315 and 390 somewhere in that i always use odd numbers right okay yeah 315 390 um but i like the project that you're doing i really do um is this something that we could possibly bang it up to about 295 310 somewhere in that area is like if we can get the low end of that is that something that's possible Mm -hmm. and sit there even on the phone nod your head and as you know Coming, especially coming from the used car sales salesman position, and this is one thing that I talk about too when I'm talking about the sales process and marketing. Once you put the price out there, no going back. The next person, the next person that speaks loses. Yep, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh, are you right? So, oh, it'll be. You know, can we do this in the, in the lower? Can we get somewhere around two ninety? I've been Shut told. Yeah, I've, I've been up. told. If, you know. <laughs> In, in the trial close phase of the sales process, meaning you're taking the temperature if they want to move forward today based on making numbers agreeable. If we can make the numbers agreeable on this project, is this something you'd be interested in moving forward on with me? Um, mm-hmm. And that word agreeable is powerful. And I learned this from yeah. Jonathan Dawson. I brought him up in your show. He did the mm-hmm. uh, fair win lose close. Uh, and I was trying to look for it. I think I posted it on in the comment thread on your, on your show that I did with you. Um, but he talks about that. Use that word agreeable because it, it's, it's wide open. We both have to be agreeable to something. And typically Absolutely. if they say, yeah, I think we do. Great. What's next? And not many people ask those questions. And that has to be taught. It's it, Doing sales is something that anyone can learn how to do. And it is also probably one of the scariest things people learn how to do. But when you learn how to do it and you are coming from a place of integrity with it, not manipulation, it can make the difference <laughs> in so many ways. No. 
I agree. Well, man, this has been a fabulous episode. I'm glad. You know, let me ask you one question. How would you, if you could, address the haters out there? What would you say to them? I love you guys. You're making me stronger (laughs) and stronger every day. (laughs) And that's, you know, I I feel that from you. I think you really do. Uh Uh-huh. You know? Uh, Yeah, they're saying your name, that's for sure. Absolutely. You know, hey, I love you guys. Keep talk, saying my name. You know, they, what's so crazy is you know they, they'll put out hate and they'll use my name and they'll say my name. It's like, idiot! Don't you know you're just making people come look at me? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey man, you ever get down to Nashville? Um, not anymore. I used to. I spent some time in Nashville um, in a previous business that I had back in the early two thousands. Um, in late 90s but i haven't been there for gosh 20 years well if you ever get down here hit me up we'll go out for a beer or a coffee or oh, dinner know, or something well, man i'd love to get, get some ribs better. down there too oh yeah barbecue <laughs> can't go wrong we've got all sorts of stuff we got a a, a diverse culture just this morning oh, I, know. I mean the traffic is just maddening down here now but man thanks for being on i really appreciate it for those people who are listening and watching right now thank you i think i'm going to start referring to you as my primers uh and like you know the like bradley's got the bomb squad should i call it like the prime squad or something i don't know i'm kind of Mm -hmm. playing with it but definitely uh subscribe view view like comment and let me know (laughs) who else you'd love to see on the primer and hopefully you got something out of this hit up earl if you want some more training on voiceover anything like that uh he's a great coach and a great guy and uh man thanks very much for being on my show today sir thanks for having me jim it's been my honor This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. Please subscribe, rate, and comment via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast.